Hello everyone, my name is Viraj and today we will be looking at the 11th problem from the CP31 sheet by TLA eliminators under the 1000 literate questions. Let's go. So move down to my sheet over here, take the 1000 and the 11th problem, basketball together. Okay, let's read this. A basketball competition is held where number of players in a team does not have a maximum or minimum limit. There are n candidate players in the competition that will be trained by Park Chanek, the best basketball coach on earth. The ith player has a power of pi. Now Park Chanek will form zero or more teams from the n candidate players on the condition that each player may only join in at most one team. Okay, Each of Park Chanek's team will be sent to compete with an enemy team that has a power of D. In each match, the team sent is set to defeat the enemy team if the sum of powers from the formed players is strictly greater than D. Okay, One of Park Chanek's scale is when a team is formed, he can change the power of each player in the team to be equal to the biggest player power from the team. Determine the maximum number of wins that can be achieved by Park Chenek. Alright, so they have given you a very neat story. Let us actually write it quickly. They give you a variable n and they give you a variable t. Now n represents n players. So everybody has a power. So there's a p array. Let's call these numbers p1, p2, p3, p4, p5, so on till pn. Now these represent players. There are n players. Everybody has their power. I am looking to make a team. Let's say I pick up any two, three players and I make a team. Let's say I pick up P2, I pick up P4, I pick up P5. So I'll say that I have a team of P2, P4 and P5. Now what happens is, as soon as I pick up these three players, for example, the player in this team, which has the largest power, for example, that player is P4, everybody else's power also changes to P4. So this basically converts to P4. This remains P4 and this also converts to P4. After this, you basically sum all these powers up and after you sum them up, let's say this is S. If this S value is greater than this D value, that is the power of the enemy team, then you can say that this team that I've created right now of P2, P4 and P5 actually wins. I hope this logic is clear. Now that being said, what is our answer? We want to print what are the maximum number of teams you can actually make which win against the enemy team. That is going to be a number and that is going to be our answer. Answer is max teams which can win. All right, I hope the problem is clear. Let us quickly look at some cases and we'll understand our idea from there. So you have six players, 180 is the power of the enemy team and then the powers are 90, 80, 70, 60, 50 and 100. So let's note them. Six players, 180 is D value. Then you have 90, 80, 70, 60, 50 and 100. Now what I can do is I can actually make a team that looks like this, 50 and 100. This is by red color. The other team according to me can be 90, 80 and 70. This is orange color. Now let's first see why do these teams win? Why does the red team win? If you actually make up the red team, the larger guy in this team is actually 100. So this guy also has now a power of 100. So this basically becomes 100 plus 100, which is 200. Now 200 is greater than 180. That means this team wins. Let's talk about this team. The larger guy is 90. So this remains 90 plus this is also 90 now. This is also 90 now. So this gives you a sum of 270, which is again greater than 180. So this team also win. So I hope the simulation is clear. And the answer is actually two. I was able to make two teams max, which could have won against the enemy team with a power of 180. Now this is arguably the best. You cannot make more than two. Hence we report this as the correct answer. All right, problem is clear. Make up your own test case. And I think you will understand this basic, basic simulation. You're just looking to make everybody else in a team equal to their largest guy's power. And then sum that up. If that is greater than D, that team wins. Find maximum teams. Okay. Now let us discuss the expected time complexity in this. So one test basically allows me one second and then it's been very neatly written that there are no test cases actually in this problem. So I can directly compare with the time limit for one test. N is given as 10 power 5 order. D is actually large 10 power 9 order. But let us compare with N actually that is the size of the array which is very intuitive. So I can write that one test will basically allow me 10 power 8 operations for one second and n is given in 10 power 5 order. So I can make up a solution that is like O of n, of course. I can even create a little higher, log n also. 
a little high n square root n this will also work but as soon as i go in sub some sort of square power that is not helping n square will not work if i come down right up till constant time everything is good to go so solutions like this are promoted and solution like this is not promoted and this is my expected time complexity which not definitely helps it tells me that okay solutions in linear or a little larger is going to work make your solution in that only all right so let us move on to our main idea now let us try to understand very small points over here which will together build our main idea first point is you want max number of teams and you have n players now basically if i represent let's say a number line like this which is let's say n players so you are basically looking to chop off parts of this number line to create a team this is of n length so i can say that maybe okay one team is from here to here one team is this much one team is only this much one team is this much and so on and you are looking to maximize these number of team don't you think that the smaller the team size will be the larger the number of teams you will be able to create that is a very important idea by common sense i can say that idea 1 smaller the team size more the number of teams okay now once you understand this point i can actually begin iterating on the next idea which is very very important and basically this is the greedy logic if you are looking to create a team size that is not very large it's like very small maybe like 2 3 maximum players are there in that you want that team to win if you want that team to win and the size is very small you would of course want that their overall power is very very high so that it is able to cross d in that scenario if i am making a team which players do you think are important for me now do you think the players which have very low power initially are important to me or players which have very very high power are more important to me of course this is the greedy idea point number 2 larger power guys are important you can say i want to preserve them what do i mean by this let's actually see this example that we had now in this test case first what i can do is because larger people are what i want to focus on let's actually sort this array on the basis of this power so this becomes 50 60 70 80 90 and 100 now let's say i'm making the first team in this first team the macho guy the main guy whose power will be given to all other people should of course be the guy which has the largest power because the team size is very small so if you want to make a team's submission value cross d a very large guy should take over that team a very large guy should be the macho man in that team so i would want that okay let's say 100 the largest guy right now which i have which has not gone to any other team is used so i'll say okay there is a team 1 which right now has 100 now in this case d was actually 180 so of course team 1 does not cross 180 right now that means you need more players now which player should i take think the greedy idea do you want to take a guy which has a power of 90 do you want to take a guy which has 70 or do you want to take a guy which has 50 remember you're trying to preserve the people who have very high powers right now 90 has a very large power but this 50 guy his power is very small greedily this 50 guy is almost next to garbage for me because this guy's power is so small as compared to the other people on top of that even if i take this 50 guy his power anyways will be overseeded by this 100 so don't you think i should not waste this 90 rather i should waste this 50 50 converts to 100 50 was anyways the lowest guy so that's great i just get a garbage guy to get added to my team which makes my team overall submission cross 180 so i'll say that if i have picked up the largest guy right now 100 then to fill all the other people in that team so that i cross 180 i'll pick up from the left now so i'll pick up 50 50 gets added but indirectly you know 50 doesn't get added 100 gets added and now you can close this team because this team has a 200 sum now of par it crosses 180 this is good to go next time let's take a different pen i again select a macho guy from the right hand side my macho guy is 90 so i'll say that there is a team 2 that i'm making which has 90 now now you have more positions to fill because right now the team's par is 90 90 doesn't cross 180 who should i take same logic 
Now let me take garbage guys from the left side because the left people who have not been used have the smallest parts. They are anyways useless to me. The 90 power will overseed them and they will get replaced. So I'll pick up 60. I'll say, okay, 60 gets added, but 60 doesn't get added. Indirectly, you can say 90 gets added because 90 over power 60. But the sum right now is still the not crossing 180. It is equal to 180, 90 plus 90. It's not crossing 180. I want greater. So I'll pick up one more guy, 70. His power actually becomes 90 now and I can close. And now this team has a 270 power and I can take this off. Yes, this team actually crosses or defeats my enemy. Now after this, the people who are left, they can of course form their team three and so on. You can continue this process. But in this case, this team three is used up and this team doesn't win. So that's fine. The maximum number of teams that actually win is two and you report your answer to be two. So the greedy idea should be clear. I'm basically trying to create teams starting from the right first because the macho guys are on that side. Once I've chosen a macho guy for a single team, till until I feel that that team's submission power not crosses D, I'm going to take leftover positions from the left because the guys at the left hand side are having the lowest powers. I, I can treat them as garbage. And this is the greedy idea. Give it a thought and I think this should make sense. This is again a pure greedy problem. Once you've understood this, your whole problem will boil down to how do I implement this? And I'll give you a pseudo code structure for this. What I can do is I can take a left pointer, let's say at negative one, and I can take a right pointer at n minus one. Then I can say that the teams right now, which I have made is zero and the team size is actually one considering that the last player is now chosen. And from here on, I want to simulate the whole thing. Now I can run a while loop. Basically, this is two pointers. Okay. I can say that till left is less than right. I would go inside this. Now I'll say if I feel who is the macho guy, the macho guy is at A of R. If A of R into what is my current team size? My current team size is one in this case, and it will later all increase. But I'll say that if A of R into team size, this represents that the team size multiplied by the macho guy's power is less than equal to D and, and there is still L less than R, then I know this team requires more people. Those people will be taken from the left. So I'll say that L plus plus bring L forward and team size also increases. So you can imagine that back over here, when you would be standing at hundred, hundred into one, that is the current team size would have not crossed 180. So you would have moved your left pointer at 50 basically saying that I'm choosing this guy and your team size would have gone to two. Now 150 create a team size of two, but their power is 100 into two, not 100 plus 50. And if you go in the else block, that means that, okay, right now A of R into team size must have crossed D. Then you can say that I have actually created a team which wins. So in this else block, I can say teams plus plus, these are my winning number. The team size is again now gone to one because now I'm resetting myself to this next macho guy and you can say R is minus minus. Okay. And this is the overall pseudo logic. Pause the video, give it a thought over here, try to do a dry simulation in your head and you will actually see that this same case that I'm trying to manipulate is going to work. What will indirectly happen is you will basically have some sort of an L and R pointer, which are at these locations and Using a two pointer approach, you will start on moving R one, 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 one to the left and L moves accordingly to expand your team by filling those garbage guys. And this happens, 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 happens till L is less than R. And as soon as L becomes greater than equal to R, you basically say that you want to break. That is why there is a value. Now by doing this, you are always making sure that you are making the largest guys as the macho people and the lowest guys as the garbage people in a team, hence greedily maximizing the number of teams. I have actually taken a small test case of my own now, and let's see this whole simulation in progress. This is your array of seven players. D is 200. I have the indexes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. R is right now at this location, and L is right now at negative 1, because that means you have chosen no garbage guy. Now you start creating team. Team 1 says that there is already 220 in that, and yes, 220 is actually crossing 200. So good to go. This is a single team of 220 par and now your R can actually move at this location. You know that your teams have increased. Now after this, you start your another team. You will say, okay, what is team two? Team two has 200, but 200 into one, that's the current size is not crossing 200. That means I need to bring L forward. So L basically comes at this location and you will now say that 30 got added in that. But how do you track that? Your team size has increased. So now you have 
200 into 2 as a check. Next time when you actually make a check by 200 into 2, you basically get 400. That crosses 200. So yes, this is again a team. And now your R moves at this location. This becomes 110. This basically close, closes a team. Now you have team 3. This has 110. Oh no, it doesn't cross. So you make your L come forward to 50. Okay. Now, as soon as you do this, 110 and this guy with 50 power also makes your team up to size 2. So 110 into 2 crosses 200. So basically team 3 is also ready to go and your R moves to 90. Next time you can say you start a team 4 with 90 and then you make your L come forward because 90 is not crossing. L comes over here. But this also doesn't help. 90 into 2 is also still not going to get above 200. So that's fine. Next time L moves even forward and L crosses up. And as soon as that happens, you basically say that, okay, this team is basically not of use to me. What are the teams that actually won three teams? Okay. I hope the logic and the whole problem structure is clear. All right. So let us move on to the coding part. As I showed you the pseudo structure, it's going to be same. You take no again variable for test cases. There are no test cases in this. N and D, then A vector input. These are the pars. Sort them, very important. And left is negative one, right is n minus one. Team size is right now one and teams are zero. While left is less than right. If I feel that A of right into team size is less than equal to D and left is less than right, this is again a check so that it won't cross. Left plus plus, team size plus plus. Else, I know a team has been created. So teams plus plus, right minus minus, macho man changes and team size is again one. And after you come out of this while loop, you know teams represent the maximum number of teams you have created, which win. Okay. Now, what is the time complexity? You have n order of here to take the input. Then this is pretty much n log n. And then this while loop is also order of n because there's like left and right pointers which are coming closer to each other. And you can say that it's roughly an order of n. Again, you're basically going to each and every value. And then I think everything else inside this is pretty much constant. So we have actually come up with a time complexity that is n log n because n log n was the larger term. Now n being in 10 power 5 order, this gives me something like 10 power 5 into log base 2 of 10 power 5, which is going to be something like a 10 power 6 order, something like that. Okay. Now what about space complexity? Space complexity is simply O of n, that is the size of the array that you have. That's all, which is again 10 power 5. So overall, the time also fits, the space also fits, and the problem is solved. Very, very greedy based idea. And this was all that is there in this problem. If you understand two pointers, it becomes very easy to implement this greedy approach also. Otherwise, you might have to do something else. The crude idea should remain the same. Select a macho man, fill all the other smaller guys with that team, and create the best team. All right. So this brings us to the end of the problem. I hope everything is clear. That's all that is there in this video. Thank you for watching.